the Honourable Member for uh, Abao. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Speaker. My question is without notice. It's directed to the Minister responsible for the National Development Bank. I don't know which one. Minister for State on Enterprises. Thank you. Honourable Deputy Speaker, I want to ask a question to the Honourable Minister with regards to access to credit for the rural masses. We can acknowledge today that our banking systems mostly operate at the provincial level and with regards to some of them with very bad or difficult policies on loans and many, many conditions, our rural masses miss out big time. Once upon a time, Honorable Deputy Speaker, the National Development Bank, for example, had a branch in Kupiano in Abao District. That has, over time, lost its extension. And I think of recently, I think 10 years ago, there was another attempt by the National Development Bank to continue to build facilities for access to credit for our rural masses. My question, Honorable Deputy Speaker, is would the minister consider a program of picking up the establishment of National Development Bank branches at the district level? Thank you, Deputy Speaker. The Honorable Minister for State Enterprise. Thank you, uh, Mr. Ashley. Speaker, I want to also thank the member for about uh, uh, Dr. Sir for this important question. I think this question also applies to uh, many of our leaders in, in Parliament today. Uh, Mr. Acting Speaker, the bank, uh, until 2017, received direct funding from, this go from the government through the national budget to be able to uh, continue to provide service and also to, to cater for expansion of its service to many of our rural areas. Uh, that stopped when uh, the government <laughs> decided not to provide funding. The bank is not a normal commercial bank, as all of us uh, already appreciate. It is a development <laughs> bank, and uh, under the rules uh, of operations, it is only allowed to charge uh, interest on the money that it lends at a rate below 4 to 3 percent, which is just enough to keep its operational expenses going. It is not meant to make profit for its shoulder. So that is a situation with the bank which all of us have to, to understand. If it were allowed to ch uh, charge interest more than 4%, it will be able to make some money. Uh, but in the case of expansion to the rural areas, uh, the bank has through some of the uh, internal sources, from its internal sources, been able to uh, establish some branches in collaboration with some of our leaders. Uh, good examples are like the former member for Maprik a number of years ago when he allocated some of his DSIP funds and uh, we were able to uh, uh, have a branch constructed in Maprik and, and our Prime Minister opened it a number of years ago. The other example is the case of uh, Tari District which uh, myself and the Prime Minister also opened. So yeah. it is open to our members to, to uh, allocate some funding. To, uh, to be able to, uh, to open up branches in your leverage, the bank will try and come with uh, the balance, and together we can work in partnership to open those. So, as I said earlier, these are the circumstances that the bank is allowed to operate in. The interest rates are below 4%, which is not enough to actually enable the bank to make a decent return on our investment. So, it is open, it is up to all of us to, to work together. Uh, we will expect a contribution from our local members and the bank will contribute its share and it will then start allocating uh, staff and the technical equipment that will in be installed in those premises to be able to run an operation for our people. So, as I said earlier, Mr. Speaker, I do not wish to repeat, but it is open to, uh, it, is, it is prepared to work with our members as long as there is a contribution from the members themselves. Uh, thank you, Mr. Acting Speaker.